right. So in the last video, we defined what it means for a function to have a relative max or min value at a point. And, and we tied that into the um, problem of finding absolute extrema, right? We said that every absolute extrema is a relative extremum. And so if we can find all the relative extrema, we just have to order them from smallest to largest, and we'll know what the absolute extrema are. Um, so the next piece of the puzzle is what are called critical points. Okay? So next definition, once again, we're going to have a function defined on some interval containing c. Um, all right. So this number c in this case, we're going to say that c is a so-called critical number of our function f. If one of two things happens, either f prime of c equals 0, or f prime of c is undefined. Okay. So a critical number is going to be some number in the domain, right? f is defined on this interval i. So c is in i, f is defined on i. So c is in the domain. Okay, so it's a number in the domain where the derivative is either undefined or zero. Okay, so far so good. Um, a little bit more terminology. We call uh, f of c is going to be the corresponding critical value and the ordered pair c f of c we call that a critical uh, point. Um, sometimes we get a little bit lazy with our language and we use critical point to refer to the number c. Um, if we're trying to be precise we should probably call c a critical number and, and this the corresponding critical point, right? And the important thing here is that it's a point on the graph, right? Because c is in the domain of the function, so c f of c is a point on the graph. All right, so that's what it means to have a critical point. What, is, what do the critical points do for you? Um, well, remember what goes on at these critical points, right? What does it mean to say that f prime of c is, is equal to zero? Well, this means you have a horizontal tangent, right? Um, so for example, where are the horizontal tangents in this picture here? Uh, there's one of them there, and there's one of them there, right? How can it happen that f prime of c is, is undefined? Well, there, there's a couple of possibilities for the, for the derivative to be undefined. Uh, one is that c could be a point of discontinuity. Um, but remember that the typical context that we're looking at these problems in is going to be that we're dealing with a continuous function on a closed interval. Right? We might have functions with discontinuities in some cases, but typically we're, we're looking for extreme values for a continuous function on a closed interval, in which case it, you know, c is not, probably not going to be a point of discontinuity, so how else can the derivative be undefined? Well, it could also be undefined because you just don't have a tangent line at that point. And typically that means you've got some sort of corner or a cusp or possibly a vertical tangent, right? Uh, just like we have here, right? Here is a cusp where it looks like, in fact, at that cusp, we're also dealing with a vertical tangent as we approach that cusp, right? Um, so, so this point here is going to be a critical point, right? And you'll also notice that the critical points of our gra on our graph, um, they correspond to points where we have a relative max or min, right? The, the only points where we have a relative max or min that, that aren't critical points in this picture are the endpoints, right? 
So it seems like if we're trying to get a list of all the possible relative um, max min values for our function, we should be looking for the critical points, we should be looking at the endpoints, right? We list all of those and we should have all the information we need. And this is in fact the case. So we have a theorem and the theorem is sometimes attributed to Fermat, which says that on an open interval, I, if our function f has a relative max or min at C, then C is a critical number. Okay, this is a very useful theorem, right? It tells us exactly where to look if we want to find all of our relative max min values, right? Because once we've found all of our relative max min values, we know that among them, we have the absolute max and the absolute min, right? So what we need to do is we need to find all the critical numbers. So we need to find all the places where the derivative is zero or undefined. Once we've got those, the only other places we have to look are the two endpoints, right? Among those, we calculate the values, we compare the smallest is gonna be the absolute minimum, the largest is gonna be the absolute maximum. Uh, one word of caution with this theorem, it says that every relative max or min occurs at a critical number, but it doesn't say that every critical number is a relative max or min, right? Uh, the standard example to tell you that this doesn't go both ways is you just look at the basic cubic function, right? Y equals X cubed, right? So we know that Y prime is three X squared, which vanishes at zero, right? So at the, at the origin, you have a critical number, right? But there's certainly no maximum or minimum at the origin, right? What's happening is that you just, the function levels off just for a second, right? It kind of it goes up, levels off. I didn't quite draw that tangent horizontal there, but there's a horizontal tangent for just a second, and then it keeps going up, right? Um, so there's no max, there's no min, but there is a critical number. Okay, so not every critical number is going to give us a relative max or min. That's okay. Um, later on, we're going to develop tools that let us tell if a given critical number is a maximum or a minimum. But for now, it's not that important because... The list of all the critical numbers is, is typically going to be finite for the problems that we're looking at. So all we've got to do is compute this finite list of values and compare, right? So this might be an issue for us later on, but for now it's not something we have to worry about.